Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, I'll be making a frosted window trifold card. I'll be using these Waffle Flower products today. First up is the Cold Hand Stamp Set. It's a really cute little set. I'll be using the matching dies for that set as well. I'll be using the um, Peace on Earth Stamp Set. I'm using that Merry Christmas sentiment. This is the Arched Window Die. And this is the A2 Nested Dome Die works perfectly with this A2 arch window die. The largest die from the nested dome set fits with the arched window. So really great two dies to have together. And then I'll finish up my card with this gift bag die to add a little gift uh, card envelope on the inside. So I've already have two white card bases. They're A2 card bases made from 110 pound white card stock. And I'm going to adhere these two together eventually, once I've done some die cutting. Um, and this will create my trifold card. So the, actually the second card base is actually backwards. So the back is actually your second um, fold in the trifold card. But that's how they're gonna fit together. I'm going to start with the um, first card and do some partially die cutting. This, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm going to create, um, I want this card to have an arched shape. So the front of my card I want actually to have the arched window, the whole like window panes and everything. So I'm going to partially die cut this. I don't want to cut it out all the way because then I'll end up just having this arched window and I want to keep that fold. So I'm going to line up the very bottom of the card base with the bottom of the arched window die and then I'm going to hold it in place with some painters tape and then when I'll take the top plate and I will line it up just short of the fold in the card base and I'll show you that here I'm done just finished taping it up and so here's the top plate and I'm going to stop about a quarter of an inch you definitely want to stop you want to be more cautious here and stop I wouldn't do anything less than a quarter of an inch away from the fold because you don't want to actually cut through the fold because then you won't have this arched card. You'll, card. you'll just have this arched window die cut. That's it. Okay, so I, I've got it a quarter away from that, that fold in the card base. So now I'm going to run it through my um, machine and then I'll pull it out here so you can see how I just stopped just short of the fold so I have this arched um, panel or this arched window panel front. So I'm going to pull off all this squirt or all this painter's tape here and, and you'll be able to see it. And I'm going to repeat this process but not with the um, arched window die but with the largest die from the nested domes die. So see I just stopped short and I'll have to trim that off with my scissors but I'm not going to do that until I finish doing the back, die cutting the back, partially die cutting the back with this largest die from the A2 nested domes die, which again fits perfectly, uh, aligns perfectly with the arched window die, so they work really well together. So lining again that bottom of the die with the very bottom of the card base, because these dies are perfectly designed to fit um, with A2 panels, so they're they're just exactly that size, four and a quarter and five and a half. And then once I, I'll do, again, use some painter's tape to hold it in place. And then I'm doing partial die cutting again, so I'm going to line that top plate just short, just like a quarter inch short of the center fold, and then roll it, then run it through my die cutting machine. And I'll hold it up here so you can see. Remove that painter's tape, and then I will have to do a little bit of trimming with my scissors just to remove that excess at the top. So right there, I'm just going to fold it in half so they're lined up with each other and then just grab some scissors and trim that little bit of excess off. I'm going to repeat this process for that second card base that I, we, I showed you in the beginning. Um, but I'm not going to use the arched window for that second base, I'm going to use the largest die from the nested dome set twice. 
So I'm only using the arch window for the first one. So you can see what we end up here with this really nice um, arched windowed card. So I'm going to show you real quick. Here's that second card base. And again, it's going to be kind of um, backwards. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it doesn't really matter for the die cutting right now, but it will matter for when we um, start to decorate it. So I already, like I talked, told you before I took that largest die from the nested dome die set and just die cut both the front and the back of this A2 card base and now just like I did with that first card base I'm using some scissors to just trim that last bit that I didn't that I didn't die cut so now I have the second base finished and both of these match up to make this really um, neat arched window um, trifold card so again I will show you how this goes in. So you can see again how that second um, card base is kind of backwards. Really the, the back of that card is the second fold and the trifold card. So that second fold is what we're going to decorate now. But first I'm going to, there's a little bit of overhang because we're nesting these two in each other. So there's a little bit of overhang when you fold it together. So I'm cutting that edge right there that I just pointed out. I'm going to just cut off um, like 1 16th, just a tiny amount off the side and then I will cut also that inside panel uh, just 1 16th off of that as well. So both card bases I'll cut a slight, see right there that inside panel, right, right that line right there I'm pointing to, I'm going to cut 1 16th off. This is just so when this all, they're all closed together, they close completely flush. There's no little tiny overhang and again this is not absolutely necessary, just kind of I thought it made an, a neater card. So I've trimmed it and now they fit perfectly together. And that's only because of the thickness of the paper and the fact that I am um, nesting these two card bases in on each other that created that little problem. Okay, so now I'm going to do some uh, ink blending. And I have that second card base and it, this is actually like the back of it, which would normally be the back of the card. This is going to be my kind of my front for the second base which will again become the second fold or second panel in the trifold card. I'm just cutting freehand cutting here some mountains basically some mountain shapes out of contact paper. This will become my mask. I'm going to use this so I can ink blend the sky. So I'll just remove um, the backing here and then I'll stick it you know at the upper um, third of the card. So once I stick this down, I will create one more mask. And uh, this mask will be for, uh, to create a little pond. So I'm just gonna stick that down now and then I'll grab a little more um, contact paper. And I'm going to sketch out a little pond there in the center of that. Just with the pencil on the back of the contact paper. Really simple sketch. Um, just freehanding kind of a pond shape. And then once I get that the way I like, I will cut this out with uh, my scissors just like I did um, with the mountains. I will pierce the center of it just by kind of folding um, the contact paper just a tiny bit. See I'm piercing it and then I'll just feed my scissors in through that hole and then just kind of cut out that little pond that I sketched out with my pencil. And this again, I'm creating this mask because I will be ink blending um, a little pond inside that negative space. So once I finish cutting this out, I'll remove the backing on this contact paper and then stick it down. I really like using contact paper masks for ink blending. Um, they work really well. Um, you don't get any bleeding underneath and they usually stick very well too. So another good use for contact paper. So I'm going to stick that down here. I'm going to have to trim the top a little bit because that top um, kind of was overlapping my mountains or sticking out beyond my mountains and I'll just stick that all down. And the contact paper is a little bit longer so it, it extends past the card which is kind of nice because nice it kind of holds the card in place here. So I'm going to start with the sky. I'm using three different shades of Distress Oxides. Uh, worn lipstick is what I'm going to start with. Then I'll use Abandoned Coral and finish up with a candied apple. So creating kind of like a pink red kind of sky. 
So very light here, and it goes really quick. Um, distressed oxides are really are really easy for ink blending. They're very forgiving, so I've been using them a lot lately for ink blending, especially. The only downfall is that they do remain wet longer, so it's easy to um, kind of get fingerprints in it if you uh, accidentally touch the blended areas. So you want to make sure, which I end up doing here, actually on that um, the pond, which I am using. Uh, broken China here on the pond, just this one shade. I'm doing it heavier on the center and then lighter towards the edges. And we just want to make sure we remember to, re to reduce getting fingerprints on your um, on your ink blending. You just want to make sure you dry it once you're done, um, once you finished your blending. That way, the you can set that distress oxides. So I'm just, just pulling off the mask now since I'm all done with my ink blending. Very, very simple ink blending here just a, and just a tiny bit. I didn't want it to be too dark. And um, the contact paper comes off beautifully. I, I, I actually have more trouble with my painter's tape um, than contact paper, which is, I know, very, very surprising, but the contact paper just doesn't really stick. It doesn't, and it doesn't pull up any of your paper. Okay, so I've already went ahead and stamped several images from the cold hand stamp set and I am now just going to do some simple Copic coloring on these images and um, I'm going to actually keep all the coloring in this video this time so I am going to uh, meet you guys at the end when I'm almost finished coloring this.
So I'm just finishing up coloring here with um, some more alcohol uh, markers. These are actually my Ohuhu markers. So I just didn't have any greens that I really liked yeah, in Copics. And I'm coloring these um, greenery branches, which are from the A2 arched window die. So the die also comes with some little extra like um, flowers and a little pot or basket. And these two would be really um, beautiful little greenery accessories. So I uh, went ahead and die cut those out of 110 pound white cardstock and now I'm just coloring them with some alcohol markers just to finish them off. Just the same colors, the same shades of green that I used for the pine trees that will be on the inside of the cart. So those are all done and uh, I finished up the Copic coloring too for the rest of the images. I did cut out um, one mouse because I basically colored him exactly how I colored the other mouse. So pretty simple Copic coloring there. Now I'm ready to assemble um, at least this scene of the card anyways. So I'm going to use several of the images that I um, have colored and die cut. Pretty much all of them except for the little greenery um, branches and those the pair of mittens. So I'm just using some um, Tombow Mono um, liquid adhesive here just to adhere these down just because I've had this handy. It was out because I'm using it for other a lot. There's a lot of other gluing that we'll be doing too. Okay, so I'm just adhering all these and creating the little scene. I just love this cute little cold hand stamp set. It is just so adorable and I just think the um, images are really easy to color too. So it's a really good set to have. And it even comes with a third little mouse that um, is used to kind of create a scene where he's making a little snowman. So you don't have to just make um, the little mice ice skating, but I mean, it's hard to resist. I know a lot of people have done it lately, but they're just so cute. So I'm finishing up here with the last tree, and then I'm going to complete this scene with a frame that I die cut using two of the um, nesting dome or nested dome dies, and I just die cut 110 pound white cardstock to create this frame and I'll just glue this to the front of this card front and it'll just I think it's just a nice finishing touch again not absolutely necessary but I just think it, it um, completes the scene and kind of completes that window look so I'll just stick that down again with the Tombow Mono liquid adhesive and then that is that frame or that panel is done and now we're going to work on, um, we're going to stamp the inside sentiment real quick before we um, do the front. So we're going to grab that first um, card base, the one with the arched window. So I'm just showing you again how they fit together. So now I'm going to grab that, right there is the inside. So that panel right there, that from the first card base with the arched window, I'm going to stamp a sentiment. I'm going to use my Misty here because I'm going to um, do some gradation stamping here. So I'm going to, to do that, I'm going to stamp the image multiple times. And if I want to stamp the image multiple times in the same spot, the best thing to use is a stamp positioning tool like the Misty. So I'm going to start with um, Abandoned Coral first. So I'll ink it up. And I'm only getting like halfway, and then I'm going to use some of that really beautiful red, the Candy Apple um, Distress Oxide, and ink, ink up the bottom portion of the sentiment. And then I'm going to do it one more time in both colors. I'm going to start, do the Candy Apple since I have it right here, and ink up that again just to make it a little darker and, and uh, more crisp. And then I'm going to clean it up a little bit here, just so I don't contaminate that top part because it's this um, abandoned coral is a little lighter so I don't want to contaminate with that candied apple. So I inked it up the t upper portion and stamped it one more time. So now I have this really pretty gradation sentiment. I'm going to set this aside to dry because again it's that distressed oxides which need take longer to dry. And while that's drying I went ahead and die cut with the arch windows out of 110 pound white cardstock another arch window and then with the largest uh, nested dome die I die cut uh, arch an arch shape with um, out of vellum. And now I'm going to glue these together. So just going to apply glue on the window pane. And I'm not, this, this, um, the die cuts so those 
the arch window die cut so those two um, two two parts of the window, the largest part of the window, can open up. But I'm not going to have that open up this time on this card. So I'm just gluing it completely shut. So this those two um, rectangle panes will not open, but um, the whole window kind of opens up on the front of the card. And I have a little bit of overhang of the vellum, so I'll just trim that off a little bit. Just didn't get it quite in the right exact right spot. So now I'm going to do a really cool technique that I learned from Jennifer McGuire, of course, the originator of all brilliant techniques. And she did this on acetate, um, but I'm going to do it on vellum. You take a little bit of um, white embossing powder, and I'm going to sprinkle it here on the... Uh, it's actually kind of the front of this um, panel. This will eventually be, be at the back, but right now it looks like the front because it's the front of the die cut with the vellum adhered to the back of it. So I'm just sprinkling with my fingers, just kind of pinching and rolling, letting the, um, the embossing powder kind of pinch through my fingers and sprinkling it all over the panes. Well, I'm sprinkling, I should say, kind of in the, the edges of the pane to kind of make it look like where snow would collect on a window pane. That's what I'm attempting to do here. So I'm just sprinkling it all over. And yes, some of it is getting onto the white cardstock, which I will clean up um, with a brush once I finish sprinkling it kind of wherever I want. Now, I Jennifer did this with acetate, and I tried acetate. Um, the heat resistant acetate and I still had a lot of warping even though I um, turned my heat gun on and heated it up for a long time I still had a lot of warping so I don't know what I'm doing wrong with embossing on acetate because I used the heat resistant acetate and I had my heat gun on for a long time and I was very careful to, to um, not let it um, hit the acetate too long with my heat gun so I do not know what I was doing wrong so if you guys have any tips on embossing with um, on acetate please share them I'd be happy to learn but I was much more successful with the um, vellum I still got a little bit of warping with the vellum but uh, not enough that I think really really um, made the card look odd or off so I really liked the vellum for this. This worked much, much better for me. So now that I've got all, I cleaned it up and I've got all the um, white embossing powder sprinkled over this, I, and I've had my heat gun um, heated up for quite a while, so it's good and hot, my heat gun. And you can see I'm being very careful here, not letting it, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, heat too long, let the direct heat be on the vellum too long, because that will definitely, um, warp that vellum. So I'm being very quick and just kind of quick strokes with the heat gun to kind of heat set that um, embossing powder. Now I know this is, it seems like a bit of kind of fussy and maybe a little um, too much. And again, you do not have to do this, but I really, really liked how this snow um, looked. I just, I thought it was so cool. Such a great technique. So, I mean, I've gone through several sheets of acetate and vellum to finally get this to work out right and that's only because it's just I was just learning how to do it but uh, I definitely think it's worth it and again that vellum was by far the, the much simplest way to do this and I had the most success with that for sure okay so you can see how pretty that looks it really does look like snow so really beautiful so that is actually going to be the front even though it looks like the back that'll actually be the front because I'm going to now glue that onto the um, card front. And again, I'm using that Tombow adhesive because it's just really nice and strong and great for um, the surface of vellum. So it works really well. But I do have to be careful because if I get in, if I get too much on there, you'll d and it squeezes past the panes of the window, you will definitely see it. So be, be cautious and careful with your glue use here. And sorry, my big head got in the way here. I'm making sure everything's lined up nice and perfectly. So just press that down. And now I have this really beautiful frosted window. So cute. Love it. So now I'm basically ready to assemble this card. I've got all my pieces together. So I'm going to add some um, glue to the back of that first card, or first card base. 
and then I'll adhere it to the second. So finally, it seems like one card. So now the two are adhered together, and again, they fit perfectly together because they're both cut with that arched, or that nested window, nested dome die. And, um, and you can see how they trifold beautifully. And now I'm just going to add just for a final touch, because this is a very involved card, um, I'm going to add a little gift uh, card envelope, which I created using the gift bag die. And really simple, I just cut it out of some pattern uh, cardstock, and I'm just going to use some little adhesive here and tuck it in right on that inside of the card. Just because this is a more involved card, it's nice to give something really fancy like this um, when you're giving like a gift, when the gift itself is basically the card because the gift card's inside of it. So I think that's a fun way to give these more elaborate cards or use these more elaborate cards. I'm going to finish off the front here with um, those greenery uh, images that I colored that were cut from the arched window die. Just going to put a little bit of glue here. Careful, I'm being careful with the glue again because um, I don't want it to be seen on the back. So I'm just making sure when I glue this, I'm just putting glue dots where it will touch the cardstock pane, window pane. And again, same thing with the um, little mittens. Just to finish up the card front, add a little detail to the front of the card. And that's all done. So you can see how it trifolds. You get this, the front of it has this cute little frosted window that you can kind of see through the images. That beautiful snow created by the white embossing powder, really cool technique. And then um, you open it up and then you see that cute little scene. So it's almost like you're like opening the window and looking outside. And then once more you open the, the second fold and then you have the um, final panel of your uh, trifold card. And I did make one more. This was my first attempt and I used different colors. So I thought I'd show you just in case you wanted to use different colors kind of more blue. I ended up with the, using the broken china for the sky, and then I used salted ocean for the little um, pond. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video today. If you want any more information on the products I used, please visit waffleflower.com, and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day.